céu. We call this special meeting to the order here at uh, 435 City Hall Council Chambers. We will uh, dispense with item two. Item three, any? No, sir. Okay. Uh, go to item four. Workshop on the results of the City of Navasota Water, Wastewater, and Natural Gas Rate Study conducted by New Gen Strategies and Solutions. Mr. Wheaton. Mayor and Council, uh, as we went through the budget process this year, we talked about the need for a utility rate study. The city's not really done a utility rate study in quite some years. I think 2013 maybe might have been the last year. I couldn't even go back far enough to find it. Um, and so uh, we hired uh, New Gen Strategies. Uh, Matthew Garrett's here tonight to, uh, to go through the presentation here. Uh, we went through a process of uh, reaching out to other vendors that provide these same services. Uh, determined that his company is the best uh, for us and best value. In addition to doing uh, the utility rate study, they also provide, are going to be providing us with a working model after we're done, and so that if we want to do what if statements as we go through the budget process next year and the year after that, we can plug our CIP in there, uh, plug in the revenues, expenditures, those type things, uh, to adjust our rates uh, accordingly and, and based on uh, any growth that we might see um, or any CIP projects that, that come in uh, to play. Uh, again, the, the presentation you have uh, before you is going to be looking at multi-years like we did for the financials. We want to make sure we look at multiple years for uh, the utility rates. Um, and so uh, I provided you in front of you, you've got a history of our utility rates. Uh, uh, and this is when I talk about utility rates, this is your water base rate and volumetric rate, your sewer base rate and volumetric rate, and natural gas, uh, which is the base rate and volumetric rate. So in the system, we, uh, we actually uh, build uh, on hundreds. Um, everything that you're going to see tonight uh, and within this presentation here, as well as on this piece of paper, is, is uh, in uh, relation to thousandths gallons. Uh, that's kind of the, the norm. And when you look at uh, natural gas, it's MCFs, and so uh, before you, um, at 2016-17, uh, went, I went as far back as I could. Uh, that Those rates you have, 2017-18 fiscal year, there was no increases that year. 18-19, uh, you increased uh, your base rates around 3% uh, and your volumetric rates around 2%. Um, on your water and on sewer and gas is around 3%. 2019-20 uh, fiscal year uh, increased uh, your base rates around 5% as well as your volumetric rates. Uh, for two, uh, 2021, uh, there was no increases that year. Uh, in 21-22, uh, we had rates increases around uh, nearly 6%, so anywhere from 5.6 to 5.8% uh, uh, increases. Uh, this year, we have not had any increases. Uh, what you're looking at there uh, from uh, 2020 uh, to, or 22, 23, all the way over to 26, 27 is what we're looking at, what we call multiple years. And as we work through the, the PowerPoint here, when Matthew gets up to go over this, um, on one of the slides, that's where those numbers, where we talk about option one and option two, uh, that, that's where those numbers come from. And at the very end, um, I tallied those up. So if you add up uh, what <clears throat> the monthly increase uh, would be for uh, fiscal year 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27, um, depending on which option you choose, I highlighted the green, which would is showing that option one is the less uh, for a, a customer uh, based on the examples that, that's provided <coughs> within the presentation. Um, want to kind of, uh, I know that uh, Ms. Clements sent some questions here, and I know that um, I want to make sure that I address some of those because there are some questions that you might have and some of the public might have as well. Um, and so um, uh, we understand there's been increases in your CIP, uh, portion related to the street and drainage, the CIP related to the capital improvement fees and Republic services. We're not talking about those. What we're talking about is your water, sewer, 
in gas base rate and volumetric rate. On the gas side, we're not talking about the cost portion where we enter into an agreement with Symmetry or Atmos or whoever that is. This is operational cost. And so these, uh, these factors are uh, what we're <coughs> going to talk about tonight. Um, and and kind of understand uh, uh, why we're needing to do some of the uh, increases. As you know, we're, we're in the process of doing some major CIP projects related to the water tower, uh, to um, the water uh, plant itself, uh, and as well as trying to do a water well. Uh, there are some pressure issues around the high school area uh, and, um, and just a little bit on the uh, west side of, of Highway 6. We understand those. That's not the primary reason for us doing the water tower. The primary reason for us doing the water tower is because TCEQ says you've got to have, for every connection, water connection we have, you've got X amount of uh, storage in the water tower that we have to have. And with Pecan Lakes coming on, and with uh, uh, Hidden Hills coming on, proposals for all the other uh, connections there, if we do not get uh, uh, something built very quickly, we're going to be in violation of TCEQ. And so that's the primary reason. And we're running really close with uh, uh, phase four. I think phase four is about the max. After that, we've got to add storage uh, for water. And if we don't increase, then we cannot allow folks to build. Correct. And that, and we actually come in sanctions too. So there's, <laughs> there's penalties that TCEQ uh, will, Carrie probably knows some of those. Uh, it's, it, was it Mag Magnolia or Montgomery, one of the others? Is, is so they've done more, more uh, they've done moratoriums. They've had a uh, moratorium for, for because they Correct. ran into this situation. So, so those are things we don't want to get into. Um, also, if you'll think about the gas, so uh, the natural gas where we're needing the new <coughs> Hollister regulator station, the, the Macon Lakes loop. Um, so Jennifer's team was very great with this last cold spell, keeping Pecan Lakes up and going. I can't guarantee that that's going to that, that's keep happening unless we get the regulator station and get that loop system in. Definitely with added more, if we add on all those houses, it's not going to, we can't do it. So adding these CIP projects is a must. But those are things we have to do. Uh, any pressures that we get is just an added benefit from the water side. So hopefully, um, there will be uh, some great pressure over there. I know that uh, we listened to the consultant that came and did our uh, uh, water study and said by adding uh, new capacity and, and, and all of that will allow some pressure over by the high school. So we're, we're hoping for that. Uh, some of the other things. Uh, another question? Yes, sir. And maybe, it's, maybe Jennifer knows. So when we had this last cold spell, I noticed that my stove, the flame turned from blue to orange. So it wasn't it wasn't coming out as strong. So the pressure wasn't as strong as it normally is. Is that that's what we're talking about, right? So we're seeing this as a problem today. That it, with increased building will just correct amplify the issue. Correct. So so we're trying to get ahead of that curve. Yep. And uh, sounds like we're in it right now. I mean, we're like correct. There. yeah yeah <laughs> we're, we're, we've caught on really well. Yeah. Uh, some of the other <laughs> other concerns and things I, I've spoken about through the budget process is when we talk about uh, cash and debt. So we don't want to. We're not. We're a, we're a local government. We don't want to gather all this cash. Your enterprise, your proprietary, your water, sewer, and gas funds need to operate like a business. They need to keep some reserves, and our requirement is 90 days. Uh, plus, we need to keep at least uh, enough to be able to, to pay for our debt, our debt payments. Um, other than that, it's, it's nice to have a little bit above and beyond, but you don't want that fund balance to keep growing and growing. So that's why this year, uh, we're able to pull down on some of those and do some other projects that we need to. However, I am of the opinion, I think the best financial advice I could give the council and for the city is to, if when we have CIP projects, we need to issue debt. And what that does is, by paying, it'll, it makes your future uh, users of the system pay their portion 
instead of making the users now pay all of the portion. Um, and so that's just something that is, I think it's fiscal responsible to do. Uh, and so that's why when you're looking at some of these numbers, we're going to be factoring in uh, when, when Matthew gets up here to do the presentation, we'll talk about some of them because we had to look at a, at a big picture. And our big picture is, okay, we need, we've already got the water tower and everything coming in now, but at some point, if the, if the growth is happening like it is, there's going to be another water tower needed. And there's going to be another wastewater treatment plant. So with those things happening, we have to figure out where those projections go in. And within the five-year plan, what we did is we didn't go year, the last year and say we need to do, do it that year. We brought it one year forward so that you can see what the effects of the debt payments would be. And so if growth doesn't happen, we, don't, we won't be doing that, those uh, debt payments and, and debt issuances and capital projects so soon. But it's something you need to start thinking about if when growth comes, when it does, it's going to come, but when it does come, you're going to need another water tower, one or two more water uh, wells, and you're going to have to have a wastewater treatment plant. Another one. Not, not closing this one down. It's another one on the other side of town and somewhere uh, probably over, uh, I think we looked, uh, it's going to be somewhere um, on the southeast, southeast side of the city. So um, at this time, I'm not going to take all of Matthew's thunder. Uh, he's, he's got a presentation here, so I'm going to let him go through it real quick and ask questions if you have any. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. My name is Matthew Garrett with New Gen Strategies and Solutions. Um, I do appreciate leaving some thunder, Jason. I think you covered most everything. <laughs> That's quite all right. Uh, having a former finance person at the helm, he, I can tell you your city manager dug in deep, and we appreciated his insights um, along this path, certainly with uh, some of the other changes the city experienced. So we'll go into it. Um, as already kind of mentioned, you are managing a number of fund types. One of those is an enterprise fund. Uh, as an enterprise or proprietary fund, we do say that you act and put your hat down as a government official and turn into a board of directors. Not for profit necessarily, but to manage prudently the assets you have for a good that you sell, frankly. Um, that said, you have, as uh, Jason had in your handout, a year-over-year -year comparison of rate increases. So kudos to you and those that came before you for taking rate action. I've been in multiple council chambers this year alone where we've had no rate increase for four to five years. So someone was kind of asleep, or for whatever reason, they didn't need it. Uh, but again, uh, at least you have that pattern of funding this business that you operate. As mentioned uh, previously, the capital improvement plan is driving some of your need. That's sort of outlined here by system. You'll see the stacked bars with water, wastewater, and natural gas funding. Um, as alluded to, that fiscal year 2026 bar is higher. Uh, we did pull back some of those five-year numbers into year four so that we could show that rate impact in year five. What I don't want to do is come to you and show you a five-year plan that knows we have a debt payment in year six, but I didn't put it in here, right? So I don't want to lead you to that cliff, which is why we back that up a bit. Again, you're not approving a funding plan to spend $12 million in fiscal 26. This is a financial forecast to help you see the rate impact should you need it. So we never recommend that you patently approve a five-year rate plan, but in this coming year, you should at least act on the current rates uh, to get you through at least a year, if not two, depending on your druthers, uh, of what's expected. <coughs> Any questions on the CIP? We've already mentioned plants, wells, and some other items, but you may have already looked at the five-year CIP ad nauseum during budget. Very good. Well, I'll move on. You'll see the way that we funded that. Of course, we have to factor in how you plan to spend those dollars over time, not just what you're going to spend it on. Uh, we have highlighted a $2 million grant opportunity that's expected. Uh, so that's a nice win for the community. So again, good job as leadership finding ways to make this more affordable for your community. Uh, but I've also listed a number of cash payments. So uh, your capital structure generally refers to your debt versus cash use, right? Uh, on your big spins, and we do have uh, a number of cash payments, but you will see that the total projected new debt is 1.6 and 11 million. And so we've done our level best to use cash where we had it, but at some point the level of capital need here can't go with cash, 
right? Um, the principle around rate setting uh, that Jason referred to is something we called inter-equity, right? Uh, inter-generational uh, equity, rather. So between generations, if this asset's going to be for 30 years, then those that come in the next 10 can also pay for it through their rates. So that principle we've seen a number of places. Um, again, this is a forecast. This isn't a final plan of how you are proving to spend. These are my assumptions that went into a five-year forecast of cost. Any questions on the big numbers here? Excellent. Additionally, we know that you are growing. We know that you have some needs in operations, right? And so we have programmed in a number of staff. Uh, that's four new technicians over the five-year period. That's one a year, not, uh, not four technicians every year in water. So that's four total water technicians over the five-year period, two total in wastewater and two in natural gas, uh, where we had sort of staggered those in starting in 24 and 25. So current rates. Um, I didn't put any red on here, but I like to call this the burning platform. It's the impetus for change. We can't stay here, right? If we don't do something about rates and we need to fund these capital projects, you'll see that our expenses are exceeding our revenues in the top left box. Uh, you'll see that our reserve target is uh, not achieved. You'll see that our debt service coverage, our pledge to bondholders, won't be met if we don't have additional rates to cover the needed bond payments. Um, so, with that, we have wastewater, sort of in the same boat. We did look at each of these in isolation. Um, so, as, as if each had to pay its own way, that's not an imperative of you, right? But you do have these as separate departments and funds. Um, and so, we can look at the cost and split on a normative basis, who should pay for what. Uh, so, you'll see the same trend. We, we can't maintain the current rates um, as they are in wastewater. So too in natural gas, uh, we're a little bit better off for uh, a short while, right, with some surplus funds, um, but we, we can't maintain the rates with the level of funding I just showed you. So, um, so what are the proposed rates based on? So I have key performance indicators, right? I'm not just shooting blindly at a number north of good. We have a day's cash on hand goal of 90 days, right? I would suggest that that's probably your floor, right? Any more than you want to operate your checking account at zero, you don't try to hit zero, right? You probably want a buffer. So 90 is what I'd say your floor is. You may want to maintain a target a little higher than 90 in this enterprise uh, to weather the storm in the, what could be a drought that causes a revenue shortfall or a flood, frankly, that causes a revenue shortfall when you're selling water. Um, additionally, we wanted to hit debt service coverage. That's just a one times factor, meaning we can pay for our operations with our current revenues and our debt needs for the coming year, and that each utility would pay its own way, right? So um, trying to avoid the subsidies that could come between different utilities. So those are objectives. So here are your current rates. Uh, I live in McKinney, Texas. I don't look at my bill. If it's within a tolerable range, I don't know how they charge me. <coughs> As a council, I'm not sure if you know your rates, because uh, you don't do what I do for a living, and it may not be very important to you, but here they are. Um, your minimum charges are 1592. Uh, that is for all meter types and sizes. Your volumetric charge is per thousand gallons, and it's uniform, right? It's uniform for the residential class, and it's uniform for the commercial class. Uh, wastewater, you'll see, is 2643 minimum, and then you have 3,000 gallons included, right, with that base charge on your wastewater, and natural gas charges are in front of you. So when I look back at your rate design, I think of a few norms that I hold to be good practices. Uh, norms would be you charge bigger meters more based on the, the instantaneous demand they place on your system. As Jason alluded to, there are some metrics you have to hit relative to uh, pressurized, either elevated or ground storage requirements per connection. Well, those are based on meter equivalent connections. So a 5 8 inch meter does not have the same mathematic requirement of a 2 inch meter. If anything, it's maybe more like an eight times factor, if not more, uh, of that smaller meter. With that said, we recommend that you would employ some meter equivalency so that you would start to have larger meters pay more <coughs> per month for their availability of that higher service level. Does that make sense? Okay. Also, we talked about a flat rate or a uniform rate per volume. 
So there's a really long winded, I need a big breath for this. The Texas Water Conservation Management Task Force Best Practices Management Guide from 2006, I believe, um, said that you should employ tiered volumetric rates. Not because you're worried about conserving water, but you're worried about prudent use of water. Yes, you should water your lawn. We like green better than brown, but should it be 40,000 gallons? If you don't change or send a price signal, I have no reason to make that next unit of water any more valuable as a resident than I do for the first thousand, right? So what we uh, will show you here in a minute is we're recommending that you put in place a tiered rate structure. That would allow marginal water usage at next increments to be charged a little bit more as people get from certain levels of usage. Does that make sense? <coughs> Additionally, you'll see later when I do your regional bill comparison, uh, you're not alone, but you're still pretty unique relative to your comparators. Most others on our list have some inclining block rates in place. Okay. So how do we set that? Well, we do a frequency distribution. We got into your data. We got to the customer record. We did a proof of revenue, uh, looked at a number of things. And what you see on the, the vertical axis is the average monthly connections that are within bins, if you will, uh, of this little histogram at the bottom. So you've got 88% of users get to at least 2,000 gallons, right? So 51% uh, are get to beyond the 5,000, and then only 8% get to beyond 15,000 gallons. And I've got a lot of data here, so I want to pause, make sure everyone can digest that, and help me uh, help you understand and clarify how we chose some of those thresholds. Any questions about what we're showing? This is for residential water use. And also, so this is what he's proposed, that the proposal is when he talked about the four tiers would be 0 to 2, 2001 to 5, 5001 to 15, and then everything over 15 based on what you're seeing here. I'm not sure what the axes on, on this are. Yes, sir. So those are counts of monthly connections. So if we looked at the average usage by connection, you have uh, about <coughs> 2,700 or so residential accounts, right? So the average use for 2,745 of those is between 0 to 1 or includes 0 to 1. So it's cumulative, right? So they pass through. So you see number of customers are dropping off. What you have in the tail is an observation that only 8% of your customer averages are over 15,000. And that about half get in that 6,000 or, or what would be 5,000 and over to 15,000. Now, the, the, so the vertical, which says average monthly connections, yes, sir. that's the number of customers. Yes, sir that are falling in that range of the okay. bin below, yes sir. The bin being the volumetric consumption of water in a month. The problem is the numbers are so close it was hard telling which one. No, and I apologize. We, we tried to show okay. those increments because occasionally council will get excited and do their own and they'll well, give me zero to three and give me this to that. So uh, we did want to show you the uniform for the first come, uh, some odd, uh, what did we get to, 25 I believe, and then we start, uh, no it's got up to 30. Uh, on each 1,000 gallon of units. So I could have tightened those up and given you some bigger font. My apologies. Just out of curiosity, are there any commonalities in the, within the ranges? Sure, relative to the users or? Users, yeah, or, or use, either one. So we didn't actually do a, what would be a, a cross, if you will, um, sample where we would say of these users, try to tie back to an average home value or uh, some other statistics around that. Um, we do know there is a, a general um, gallons per capita per day usage. You probably have a target of 150, 160. Um, it, sh it could be lower. It certainly is lower in some of the areas that are short on water. Um, but we can talk about what the average person uses. Um, and we can talk about that, but I can't tell you uh, any other demographics about these user types. Uh, the data we were presented was kind of an account number and consumption per month. So. Um, of course, we can tell you it spikes in the um, watering season. Right. Yes, sir. With that, other questions on it? 
going to show you how that's employed. Uh, again, the color banding is a great point, uh, Jason. Thank you, sir, for showing that 0 to 2, 2 to 5, 5 to 15, and 15 and above are the bins or buckets, the tiered brackets, really, that we are suggesting you use. So getting into, you want me to go ahead and go one more, Jason? Because I think that was, that was the one right. No, look, that's right. You're, you're right. Sorry. Okay. You're right. So now that we've talked about a couple of rate strategies, one, we could just raise all rates, right? And we can get there. I can tell you a percent that gets you to your number, and we don't have to change anything. But you may be in the same pickle. You may not encourage the right customer behaviors. You may not be evaluating the cost on your system for the larger meters if you don't make some changes. So we're only proposing two scenarios. Both of those include employing a meter equivalency factor. Um, so as an example, I believe it's a three-quarter inch to a two-inch that is an eight times factor. What we're recommending is that you look at only a 50% of the meter equivalency. So if, based on the math, I should charge you $200 for that two-inch meter, I'm only suggesting maybe a 175 right, or some number less than at a percentage. Does that make sense? Okay. Secondly, the timing is really in question. In scenario one, we have no rate changes to anyone until October, sort of in conjunction with uh, budgeting process, uh, and we would employ those four tier structure to the residential and put the meter equivalency on all of the customer classes. Scenario two puts one change into place here in March coming up in the near term, which is to put a 50% meter equivalency factor on commercial customers. Most of your large meters are commercial, and I can't speak for every commercial owner, but oftentimes in communities I serve, commercial has a little less resistance to rate change. Right? So they have a larger meter already. They've been paying the same rate as the small meters. We can show that commercial has an additional cost to us. And so that's how we would justify changing the rate for that one customer in the near term. Then again, in October, we'd come back and set the rest of the rates, the residential uh, and the tiered structure, and we put those into place. So that's the only difference, is the timing, where commercial would be uh, in March in Scenario 2, and everybody would be uh, in October in Scenario 1. So here are those numbers side by side. So the residential bill impact of uh, Scenarios 1 and 2, um, you can see that to get to the same end, we may have no variance in year one, right? We did not have a change, so I'll point to water at the top left here. So we're not changing in scenario one the rates to residents until October, right? So that's a zero dollar change here. If we were to uh, go ahead and increase, we'd have a four dollar change in fiscal 23. In 24, we would see the full impact of the rate change here on scenario one. And so ultimately you can see that across each of these different utilities and we're really just staving off a necessary increase which will produce a little bit larger step, right? If you, if you don't put money aside today and you need all of it tomorrow, it's gonna be a bigger jump. So it'll be a little bit bigger increase on uh, scenario one if we did nothing until October. Does that make sense? So on a combined basis, we have this $13 differential um, between the two, and, and you see that go up over time. And I think Jason already plotted on your large sheet if you want to see it sort of in that format as well on a percentage <coughs> over time. <coughs> so you can see where you stand relative to your, your current rate, which again would be scenario <coughs> 1 in 23. So if you did not change in fiscal 23, you wouldn't have any movement. They're at 5315. This is for a user that has 2,000 gallons of water and wastewater. Um, also, that small footnote with the asterisk and the little squiggly, which the real name evades me, um, but those are two symbols used around the uh, comparator cities to indicate uh, the asterisk where those communities do have a tiered rate structure, as we've suggested. And the other indicates that they have meter equivalency. So you see sort of in the minority in Navasota not employing some of those best practices on your water rate designs. So this is more of a typical user 
in Navasota, around 6,000 gallons of water in wastewater. Certainly we have a number less, and you all saw the chart, we have a number more. But if we're going to talk about your average, this is the representative average user, uh, where we have uh, the same sort of scenario, right, where uh, the current and scenario one are equal at 8312, and you can see the impacts of scenario two and scenario one uh, as proposed. I should also add there may be a number of communities, as much as we did uh, to review these and see who has rates, there are a number of communities also looking at their rates going forward into fiscal 24. And so, of course, we don't have what they're planning to do coming October. Uh, so that's important to note that the relative position may change. It could change substantially, and it could be minor as well. I feel like I should pause longer on this. Any other questions about the rate designs proposed? Why would we change rates in that way? The net effect. All right, All right well, hearing none, I'll assume I should go on to natural gas. Uh, so again, here we've chosen the average winter use. Uh, some of your customers may not use any natural gas uh, until it comes winter time. Others may have sporadic use, but certainly in the winter we find that number to be higher. Here it's around 6,000 MCF in winter, and that number is actually used pretty widely for comparisons on investor-owned utilities. So it made a convenient comparison on the next slide. Uh, but you'll see um, we don't have a lot of local comparators, right? Um, natural gas is not a utility that every city provides. Uh, so you'll see that we have a pretty broad range, uh, geographically, of those that have it. But that's your relative standing, and the rate increase you'll see is not nominal, but it doesn't really move you in relative position in the comparator group of other cities that have this. Again, as referred to before, this does not include the gas cost adjustment. So the commodity that is used is billed independent of our rates. These are rates to cover our cost at the city, and the market rate effectively, or whatever you've contracted for, uh, is the, the commodity rate that will pass through your gas cost adjustment factor. All right. Additionally, we, we've done some comparisons to investor-owned utilities uh, from what we could from, invest, or from uh, publicly available records. Um, and so you see here, you, you stack up comparable, you're not quite the lowest person on the chart, but you're doing pretty well relative to even privately owned natural gas operators. Uh, these aren't all in your area, again, uh, but these are investor-owned utilities we could readily get our hands on uh, rate, tariffs, or schedules for. So that actually gets me to questions and discussion. Happy to go back, cycle through what the tiered rates mean. Um, I don't think we have an exhibit about what the rates really look like at this point, but since we're workshopping it, I think we're more looking for feedback on rate design options, correct, Jason? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so mainly to get back to uh, whether we're, we're going to look at doing option one versus option two. Uh, so what I had down, you know, when, you, when I first started looking at it, uh, of course, option two looks really great, uh, especially when you you look at um, um, sewer. So sewer, uh, if we do option two, that's a 17.5% increase uh, in March, and then another 17.5% increase in October. Uh, if we go with option one, no increase in March, but a 30, <laughs> nearly a 38% increase in October. Um, however, when you when you look at the long-term effect of it, and that's what I did was look the big picture. Um, you add up um, what this year uh, the, the actual five years would cost uh, over a period would for sewer two hundred forty-six dollars and eighty-six cents on option one versus two hundred fifty-three dollars and forty-seven cents. And the reason is 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 because of that. Uh, it's, though it's thirty seven point seven, you've got seventeen and a half uh, twice uh, within 
a six month period or uh, yeah right at a six month period uh, not much fluctuation there it, it gets back to council what, what what is what is something that you're going to have to answer to your constituents what's what's it going to be uh, when 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 you get out there uh, an increase in March and then followed six months later to do another increase or just wait until October <coughs> the residents time hey the, the rates are the increases are coming that way uh, city can advertise and get that out there get get them prepared for it um, and, and just do uh, an increase in October on the, the sewer that on that last column where it has the what is the it? green yeah the green yes sir 246 86 yes sir what is that number so that number is your 23 plus <laughs> your 24 plus your 25 plus your 26 plus your 27 equals that amount and then for op that that's for that option one option two is uh, 23 24 25 26 and 27 for option two okay I'm 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 lost the 34 if we go back to 22 23 What's the 3480? The 3480 is your monthly charge for residential sewer, sewer. at 6,000 gallons. So that green at the end of that is an add of, of one month in each month? Uh -huh. That's one month, that's correct. I'm, I'm not sure what that number gives me. I, I mean, I, I see, yeah. I see what the what the mathematics is, yes. but I'm not sure what what the usefulness of that number is. I believe just the green is highlighted to be the slightly lower when you when you add the cumulative effect, and I think the sum of those individual months per year. Of course, that's not a yearly total, but if these were normal users, then that would be their effective monthly delta under the two scenarios. Right. Yeah. So the, the sum the two, of those. Yeah, it'd be the sum of it. But as a consumer, as a consumer, I'm not interested in what no. January of 23 is versus January of 24 versus January 20. Correct. Uh, I'm I'm interested more in what it's going to be for the month of or, or for the year rather than the month. And I'm I'm going this way instead of this way. Oh, absolutely. I would suggest that these long-term numbers, these five-year forecasts that Jason put together, those that we've put together, are really for you because you have an appetite for, for long-term vision of what you're going to need to yeah. do in the future with okay. rates. When you get down to the public communication, I trust it's going to be rates are this, rates are going to be this, here's when it affects you, here's what you can do to minimize your usage sort of messaging. But no, correct. This is really for you kind of guiding uh, scenario one or scenario two. Um, as an option. One of the major reasons we don't want to immediately pull the trigger on a tiered structure uh, is because we're about to get into the watering season. We want some time to, to educate people on this. Um, and so that's another good reason to have a little bit of a, a stave off period to start the public. Uh, well, when would we start the, the tiered system? In October. In, in October. October. Yes, so sort well, of after the peak season. In, in the second. Well, so based on scenario, scenario one, we would. Um, we would do October and then uh, yeah, yeah, both of them, both of them in October. You're correct. Yeah. He's correct. One thing I should add: the proposed rate differential between the tiered structure at the moment is 10 percent, which is modest. Like that is negligible, right? Two dollars and fifty cents. Add another 25 cents. Is that going to change customer behavior at that next tier? No. Um, that same long-winded best management practice guide I mentioned earlier suggests no less than 25% between your steps to have a conservation price signal. That said, we want to turn this boat a little more slowly, and we thought we would ease you into, A, you have a tier differential, even if it's small, and as the city determines that it would like to increase 
conservation measures for what you may consider discretionary, unnecessary maybe, use at the you know, 25000 and up on a residential property, you can pull those levers later. We're trying to just give you the structure in this first year, and we think that's a lever you may want to uh, pull in the future to sort of increase that gap to send stronger price signals. So while we have the price differential, we're not expecting a lot of rate shock because we don't anticipate that first 10% per step to amount to a whole lot of money, I guess. I, I don't want to minimize someone else's budget, uh, but it's certainly the smallest step I've put on a proposal this year. Mm -hmm. there, there's not much difference between scenario one and two financially. It's, it is the perception. Right. That's the only thing that I think that I'm asking from y'all. What, what, what can you live with <coughs> perception-wise? You don't have to come to an agreement tonight, uh, but please let me know, right. especially if, if you're looking at wanting to do uh, uh, the scenario two, we, in order for that to be enacted in, in March, we've got two, we've got to do, right uh, the next meeting would be the first reading, February, uh, first meeting of February, the second reading, uh, and that gives us just enough time to get the rates entered into the system. Uh, again, the usage would be March. They wouldn't get, they wouldn't be billed till April. Mm -hmm. so, so we'd have some time to get it in there. But that would be the, the process. If you're wanting to do it all in October, then we could come in February and, and do the ordinance in February and mm -hmm. with the effective date, October 1st. between now and then if you just give me any questions you might have because uh, I've got two other council members that I need to right. to walk this through as well um, and get some of their feedback as well and then uh, as Matthew said this isn't we w between now and then we can get the, the actual what the, the structure is uh, for all of the rate structure because this is just mainly dealing with residential and commercial but you've got inside uh, inside city limits, outside city limits. We got um, airport. You've got a number of different yeah, classes got, right yeah, now. Yeah, different classes and everything. But they'll all follow the same scenario percentage. We've we've been very careful over the last <coughs> ten years, anyway, that we didn't heap everything okay. together. That if we were increasing one, that we maybe held off on another one so that it wouldn't hit the consumer at the, all at the same time. Our economic situation being what it is now and much different, uh, it's going to hurt. But it's like everything else, we're, we're going to have to be prepared for it. And I like the idea of <clears throat> waiting, postponing, and not for the sake of postponing, but postponing it as much as possible to uh, allow people allow first of all the vain hope that, that something's going to happen with inflation and, and the situation is going to be better but realistically looking at it and just saying that they'll give people a little more time to plan for it. Is there any consideration on new customers and tap fees and things like that? So there, there are always, we always look at all of the different uh, ways to um, include in because it's the new ones that are basically causing this. Uh, so that's my question. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Is the, are you? Are we looking at that? Is any part of the mayor? I am looking into increasing the tap fees since the meter um, costs have increased and materials have increased. Um, so we are looking into some uh, tap fees to go up 
for residential and commercial. But that wouldn't affect anything on this. I mean. Well, yeah, it, 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 it's a little bit piece, but but the other piece. So you, please understand, in year once we get to year twenty six and twenty seven, those those might drastically go down. If we don't need to do a wastewater treatment plant, a five million dollar and by then it's probably going to cost. We put five million in there just to put a number, a older place older. But if if growth doesn't happen, say it, it's another five years out, those rates can go back down. But at some point, you're going to need a wastewater treatment plant, uh, and so you can see rates go like this. And how will it be monitored? So that's that's the great thing about the the, the model that uh, uh, Matthew Sferns providing to us the additional funds uh, that were allocated for that uh, they're providing us a workshop on how to uh, input the data into it. Uh, this isn't the the only rate study that we need to have. You don't need to have a rate study every ten years. You need to have one at least every five years. Come back and and retool it. The great thing about the tool that he's providing, we might be able to extend some of that um, and uh, input the numbers as as we get growth, as CIP comes in, adjust those up, down, whatever we need to. And it's a what if, if I'm not mistaken. It's a it does. It has some scenarios. We, we have a number of clients, like Conroe down the road has used us now for nine years. And we go back in every year and do a little work, right, as opposed to them driving the model. Some of our clients have the model, as is uh, proposed to do here. Um, and so uh, this is an ongoing, we recommend you no less than you look at your property taxes and sales taxes to set general fund. We recommend you look at your earnings from your utilities every year. So your staff, through this tool and their continued efforts, if they invest the time into it, can effectively do their own rate study annually. They can also have the, the what-if scenarios, as Jason alluded to. What if I move this project out two years? Oh, well, I can tinker with rates a little bit here uh, and there. So that's the goal of this. It is just Excel. It's not proprietary. It's just uh, a couple decades of doing it that put it together, and then we can pass it off to your staff to maintain. This, this also does not allow for the possibility of getting grants in the meantime, does it? Well, it does, and as much as we've already put in $2 million into this, so the tool will allow, you have the $2 million grant, I believe, yeah. in 23. And so that's something we can factor in, that uh, there are known costs, but there is this offset, right, another pocket to dip into. Right. So staff could factor in an additional grant. They could factor in additional small increases to tab fees, right, as what it, we call a revenue offset. Those are minor revenues relative to the grand scheme, but they can certainly update those, and they could put a new number in their forecast for it um, if needed. So yeah, it has a little bit of flexibility built into it. Um, I, I believe we even have three other departments built into it, so should you change your general ledger uh, structure, that it's something that could be wrangled without having to call Nugent again. Uh, and then the lastly, we do have a custom ribbon that has a help button, and it sends us the file, and whoever's driving at the time can say, help, I broke it, and we do provide a little assistance. Uh, just to keep things moving forward. And as Matthew talked about, as if you start seeing a buildup of cash, that's your telltale. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, based on revenue projections for next year, you already have cash on hand. Maybe next year we don't do a, a pay, a, you know, a, a rate increase. And so, not so much decreasing, you <coughs> go without increasing for one year, which in, technically is a decrease in your rates. Yeah. And we would not be proposing that, that all of these changes that are listed here would be enacted now. No, sir. No, sir. It would have to be voted on each year, each time he goes to change. Right, because it, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a living document, so it's going to change right. Right. Uh, throughout. This is just can you give you a big picture again uh, so that you can do planning. Okay. Go through the agony every year. Any other questions for Matthew? Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate it. Sir. Thank you. Mayor, that's all I got on this item. Thanks for having us.
any other any more questions or anything? Discussion? All right. Well, we'll adjourn.